Welcome. We're back for the second part of the program we began last week on the 21 psychological elements that you should be accounting for in your web design. Would you immediately look at one of your own landing pages? As you start to think about that, I want to ask you a question about the page you pull up right now. So try to split the screen if you can. If not, just shift over for a moment to a landing page that you can utilize. And as you do, I'm going to reference a case study and drill down deeply and get immediately into the list. If you're just joining us, we taught this last week. And in doing so, we worked through the first three of these pieces. And I would recommend that you get last week's YouTube live broadcast. In the meantime, here's the question for everyone. Looking at your own site, how would you describe its personality? Think about the site you currently have up and ask yourself, what is the personality of that site? Meaning, if you personify it, which is what happens in the mind of a site visitor, in fact, as you've heard me teach, people don't buy from websites, people buy from people. And they are interacting around that site and they, in their mind, personify the entity. Is this a braggadocious site? Do you tell me you're leading? Do you tell me you're the best? Do you make unquantifiable statements about quality? Is this a site that uses lots of superlatives? Do you engage hyperbole? What are you doing with the words and the pictures on the page to communicate who you are, not just what you're saying? Let's back up for a second. If someone walks up to me on the street in a trench coat looking furtive left and right and offers me a Rolex, uh, Rolex which they claim has not been stolen and they simply tell me they've fallen on hard times and they'd like to sell it to me for a hundred dollars. I am not qualified to look at the Rolex and determine whether or not it's real. I can't find those clues that a, an experienced jeweler would find. So when I try to judge whether or not that Rolex is something I should purchase, my first default position is no. And the person on the other side must overcome my absolute skepticism. Everyone coming to your site except those referred are already in that position. Further, if I'm not qualified to judge your product, and most of us aren't because we haven't experienced it yet, you might be an expert, but even if you are, until you've experienced the product, you don't know for certain. Then I am judging your message by evaluating the messenger. I wrote an academic paper for the University of London, Haythrop, on this very point. In those cases where we receive uh, a claim, we often default to the evaluation of the person making the claim rather than the claim itself. Why is this so important? Because look again at the site you pulled up. It could be your website, it could be a competitor, but look at the site and ask yourself a question. Do I trust this person? Think of the site as a person. Look how they talk and look how they present themselves. Think of the Rolex example again and imagine how your opinion might change based on what the person is wearing. Imagine that your opinion might change based on the story they tell. Imagine your opinion might change based on the actual choice of words. In all of those cases, you're doing something that has kept our species alive. You're, you're forming intuitive judgments based on implications. There's two types of logic that we often talk about, at least in classic theory, inductive and deductive. This is called deductive logic, and you are engaging it to judge whether or not there's any possibility you could get that deal. Ultimately, most of us would love to buy a Rolex for $100 even if we're just going to resell it. The challenge of that person, that man with a $100 Rolex in his hand, is that he has no way to communicate credibly if he himself does not come across as trustworthy. Now, if you're joining us for this broadcast and you missed last week, the ultimate question we're trying to answer is this. 
how do I design a landing page that accounts for the key elements of the mind, the 21 psychological elements that must be addressed in our approach to the landing page. So when you think about it in that way, we've begun to teach three of those. And I will tell you right now, if you skip last week, you're going to miss the most important part because the most important part is in that objective and other key points that we discussed. Now, while you think about that and while you ask yourself, what is the personality of the site that you are looking at right now? I'd like to shift to a marketing Sherpa case study and just point it out as an example. You can see it. I'll ask Paul. He's uh, over here supporting me. Paul, can you sort of scroll through that study? Stop right, right. Let's stop right there. There's three pages. And we're discussing the original pages. And then you'll see uh, an interview between Dan, our head of content, uh, and, uh, and the CEO of the Aetna company called HealthSpire. And he's discussing the process. Now, go down further and you'll see uh, that uh, we've taken their original page, and there it is, and we've readdressed the 21 psychological elements and designed a new page. Now, the reason I'm referencing this case study is because if you read it, you'll see an overview of the methodology, but what we haven't taught there is how to start from scratch not only how to optimize that page, but in this case, we completely rebuilt it from the beginning. How do you begin with nothing but a blank canvas? So many times we're failing to get the test results we want because we're testing on the wrong category of page. We talked about that last week. And so you won't ever get into that high performance zone until you almost go to a blank canvas approach. Now with that in mind, I want to continue to teach these elements today. Scroll down on the Aetna to the final part at the bottom. And, uh, and as you do that, I'll just use this result to help us think about what changes. Look again at the, at the actual increase in leads. Now this is 638%, carefully quantified, certified by our scientists, and obviously uh, experienced in terms of results by the company as their CEO will no doubt indicate in the interview. There's nothing for sale on this page. I'm not selling you. I'm just giving you an example of a result and saying, let's go beneath this case study. Let's peel back additional layers and let's think deeply about the sequence of thought as it is unfolding. Last week, we taught you how to think about the profile, not in the classic sense with classic demographic attributes, but the profile of the person you are serving with that website. Then we challenged everything we think about the concept objective. In fact, there were critical four key points, but in addition to that, we discussed the critical uh, attention uh, principle, which is 70% of the page should be focused on a single objective. We talked about why. Then we talked about testing into the right approach before you drill down with incremental improvements. I am now picking up point four, and let's make certain you can see that diagram. And as I talk about this, we're going to discuss and learn together in an organic way. I am not teaching with notes. Candidly, I'm teaching directly off this piece and 30 years of experience in our testing lab simply to have a meaningful conversation with you. And I think uh, what's more important is not to come across as a great speaker. What's more important is not to impress you with how clever we are. What's important is to give you something tangible that you can do right now in your own enterprise. That being said, you'll notice that point four is flow. What is flow about? Well, people think in terms of thought sequence, and I could share with you from hundreds of experiments where we've demonstrated that when we order the page and its key elements in such a way as to flow through a, uh, a logical sequence of thought, clarity increases, and in addition, the overall impact increases. And of course, the net result is a conversion increase leading to more revenue. Now, what does flow mean and how do you apply it when you're thinking at a, across that blank canvas? What you're really doing when you think about flow is you're saying, how am I going to structure the page so that it supports the sequence of thought necessary to achieving an inevitable conclusion in the mind. I want to make certain that you know that point 
And again, to those of you that are experienced people, Sean joining us from in the past, and Barry, I recognize, and of course, Dave, and many of you that I'm watching in the chat function as you interact, bear with me as I try to teach you and the new audiences and yet deliver new content for you while at the same time helping them get a sense of what we're talking about. And I just used code words for Mech Labs. The first one was conclusion, and the second one was claim. Last week, I taught how we control a series of observations on the page. This is the, the zeros and ones, the pixels, to generate a conclusion that powers a decision which comes with an expectation and is followed by an experience. I can't reteach that. I will only say that marketers must use the structure of the page to follow a a linear sequence of thought that does not take this approach. Now, please carefully see uh, what we don't want to do, all right? Here's what we don't want to do. We don't want to hit them in a sort of haphazard way with little modules that are designed to more or less create a weight, a heavy weight uh, of evidence, but that do not flow together with any sort of narrative center, simply stacks of information. And what I'm looking at right now is 85% of every web page I ever see since uh, Apple came along and sort of popularized that design. That is a large no. And, uh, and I'll, I'll say that real clearly. However, that's not the only mistake we make. I'm going to show you another mistake that's made over and over again, and it fails again to accomplish what needs to be done. So before I go to the mistake, think about the page you pulled up. You'll learn more from me and this time together if you're actually trying to apply the thinking to one of your existing pages, and if you're thinking about a new page that you may want to create. But take a look for just a moment. What I'm really trying to do is achieve an inevitable conclusion. Now, listen to me carefully. There's a lot of things I'm packing into the density of this that I cannot break out, so I'm choosing my words with care. The inevitable conclusion is always, and first, a conclusion about you before it is a conclusion about your offer. Did you hear that? How you talk and how you present yourself will subconsciously influence the way they, they view you. You cannot separate the offer from the, here comes a hard word to say, offerer, from the person tendering the offer. So they're going to draw a conclusion in two parts, and that conclusion is going to be a conclusion about you and potentially about the product. If it is a positive conclusion, it will lead to the decision that we discussed last week to purchase. Now, if you think about all that, I'm going to show you another way you can accomplish that and another way you should not even try. So here is the first no. You can see it over here as we discuss the errors in this approach. But there's another way you can do this wrong. And, uh, and to do that, I'm going to have to take all this off. And I'm going to share with you the way a lot of pages flow. We, we start with uh, a big waste of space at the top using a picture that probably has very little value and doesn't really support our value proposition or drive people into the page. And then we start talking to them simultaneously with a, with a column over here in a box and maybe three things in this column and then there's another box here that, you, you, that contains content and, uh, and what you begin to have is a disorganized set of voices virtually all talking at the same time. The outcome of this does not produce a clear conclusion. It actually creates an obstacle course in which you've got to take as a, as a visitor to the site the risk of trying to navigate all of this and you don't even know where to begin or how to flow naturally through the content. I can give you a simple example. 
all of these things I'm teaching from the standpoint of psychology can be grounded in the world itself and in situations we find daily. We're not just talking really about websites. We're talking about your life, how people will perceive you. We're talking about many other areas. We're talking about philosophy. In fact, this has impacts in virtually every area of your day, but especially after you leave the office and go home. However, you're here to learn something for commercial application, so let's go back to the, to the boxes and options and banners and suggest to you that it's more or less like this. I see right now David Carrier on the phone. In fact, he just used the word schizophrenic, and he's correct. And I see Jennifer, Cynthia, and Dave. Let's imagine that I had all four of them in the room right now. And let's imagine that, that uh, as I walked in, all four started talking to me at the same time. Now remember something. When I walked into the room, if it's like your day, I came directly off of three conference calls that I didn't plan to have. I was being uh, wired as I progressed into the room. They were pushing things in front of me. I stood up, pulled the notes on the fly, and had very little time. So imagine that I was busy and occupied when I walked into this room. And that's the way the visitors to your site are also. Their mind is not open and fresh and relaxed and ready for you to take your time. They're already in a certain mental state which is only aggravated if they're met with five people or four people talking to them at the same time. So the danger we have right now is that many of the sites you have up in front of you and some we may look at before this broadcast is over that have been submitted to us, what you'll see is there are multiple voices and they're talking at the same time and people don't know where to focus their attention. I mentioned last week, I quoted president of a university who said, where there is a wealth of information, there is a poverty of attention. I hit your page already impoverished. And if you're not careful, you make it worse. I'm only teaching flow. We haven't even got to the next point. But if you'll pay close attention, you'll understand something here. That structure cannot be separated from the message. Indeed. As you'll find in other philosophers, look at uh, Balthazar, uh, Gracian, for instance, what you'll discover is that form and substance are not two separate pieces. They're inseparably intertwined. The form of the page and the substance of the page must be considered together. So this is another no. This is another don't do this. So don't stack up ideas and don't display the conversation with multiple voices in multiple locations across your page, which leads me to a capital question. If you're listening to me now, you're probably hearing things that are unique to, to Mech Labs. And if you don't know how we arrived at this information, I'll just tell you, we conducted 20,000 plus path test. We invested $138 million, and that's where all this is coming from. I don't want to sound pretentious. I, d I just want you to understand why we're confident in what we're suggesting to you right now. What can you do? Here's the question I think we should all be asking ourselves. What can you do in order to help control the sequence of thought, structure it properly so that people are not being barraged and they're not being stacked upon, piled upon with somebody's ideas? I'll give you an answer to that question if, uh, if you think it'll help you to design the flow of your page. So here then is a sense of that. One, don't have multiple voices, have a single voice. So I'm gonna abbreviate for those of you taking notes. Single voice. Number two, in fact, I'll, I'll spell out voice. Number two, you want to have a linear flow. Linear means you need to flow like vertically down the page. This will help you to structure the thoughts. Thirdly, you want to connect every thought with transitions and conversation. So I'm going to put T and C, transitions and conversation. Number four, you want to build. And that build is climactic towards a conclusion that is inseparable from 
the decision. So you're building towards a conclusion that is inseparable from the decision. It might be the conclusion that A, it might even be what we call a reverse conclusion. I'll give you an example. You may not be able to prove on this page that they should take your services, but you may be able to get them to conclude that they can't afford not to investigate further, which is a huge win. So it depends on the price points and other factors, but I need a conclusion about you and the offer that leads to a decision. So I'm going to add C plus D. This is the build. So a single voice, linear, a, a linear progression or flow, uh, connectors between the key thoughts with transition and conversation, a build that is climatic and that leads towards the conclusion inseparable from the decision. A conclusion that doesn't power the decision is of little value. If you get all of these pieces right, what you start to have happen is people flow through your page. Now, enemies of this flow have been described in the examples I just gave to you, but think further about this. Keep the page simple, like a letter. It does not have to be a letter, although I've achieved massive conversion lifts by following the letter approach. But it should at least flow, and take a look at the diagram. I want you to see how we're even illustrating what this might look like. This leads me to another question. What about columns? And let me help you with that. Make certain, in keeping with our 70% objective rule, that the main column dominates. Do not have competing even-sized columns, except for one rare but important situation. You may ask, what is that situation? And I'll give that to you if you donate an extra $5 to today's broadcast. Uh, no, I'm kidding you, but I, I, I'll break it down. But first, let me go back to the evenly weighted columns. When you give me three evenly weighted columns, I don't know where to look. So if you have columns, what can you do about that? Let me show you uh, with, uh, with an example. I don't want to mess up these notes. So yeah, I've got enough room on the whiteboard. And, uh, and so here is my example. Imagine that the main column is like this. Okay, you can have a supporting column over here, but it should only be support. It should never contain information necessary to making the decision. It should contain information supplemental to the decision. It can contain testimonials. It can contain supporting uh, statistics. It can contain uh, useful videos that support the message, but never use it to contain the information that is essential to making the decision you are asking them to make. So use your columns for support. This is all about point four on the diagram. Let's go back to the diagram. Point four is determine the flow of your page. Get the layout right. Now, I want to promise you right now, I know I have quality designers, and if you're on here, go ahead and wave your hand if you're a designer on this call, because we need you to learn this and to help us all. The average designer working in an agency is all excited about new ways to display things and, and frankly, art and often, and, and I want to caveat this by saying a third of my students are agencies. I'm helping agencies every day and I'm not against you. I'm for you, but be different. The average agency is more concerned about winning an award than they are winning a customer, and it shows in their designs. What we need is a, a, is a new kind of agency that focuses on this underlying psychology. You say, well, is that Met Labs? No, it's not. We'll teach you, we'll guide you, we'll do it with you, uh, we'll help you get it done, we'll even help you get the agency, we'll even help you manage the agency, but my job is to transfer capability into your group and into your agency's group. My job is to help you get a result, and I will do that. But ultimately, I want you to be able to get the result. I'm a teacher. This is a research institute. And uh, we can help you win a conversion lift. But ultimately, we want you to build that capacity internally between yourself and your supporting agencies. And we need agencies that we can recommend in certain situations. And so if you're there with a problem and you're looking for help, check out the quick win intensive that we have and we'll try to help you that way. 
and it'll get you that quick win. And we have some other options available. But ultimately, the big difference here is we want to give all this away. We're doing it right now on this, on this broadcast. So back to the point. Designers, we need you to think about the underlying psychology. We need you to serve, not impress. And that's really important as we think about how to get to the next step. So we have just discussed four points. I am not going to rush through this outline. If it takes me two more a broadcast, I'll just keep teaching. I've never taught this uh, to, a, to an external audience uh, until now, uh, last, last week and this week. It's a different type of content, but it's vital for us as we think about pages. So let me move to the next point, personality. Before I go there, do you have questions for me? Being here on the live broadcast gives you the ability to interact. Anybody that has a question about what I've said, just fire it to me. Paul is answering questions, but at the same time, uh, if I see a question that might help the whole audience and, uh, and requires some explanation, I'll take it on. Otherwise, Paul is here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's keep going. I see some encouraging comments. I can see them right there. I have three big, one screen is, I don't know, six feet, five feet. Huge. And then I have this other monitor and I see all your comments right there. And over here I see what you're seeing, I hope. This helps me sort of go back and forth and sort of adjust in real time. The point in front of us now, though, let's go back to the diagram, is, uh, is different. And that point is personality. Now, in the beginning, I asked you to tell me what the personality of your page is. How many of you, here's what I'd like you to do. Take a look at that page, whether it's yours or your competitor. And, uh, and what I would say... <laughs> Thank you, David. Uh, what I would say is, uh, tell me the personality of the page you're looking at. Somebody just write it into us. Take a look at, take a look at it, and let's talk about it. While you're doing that, I'm going to pull up one of our live op pages. I'm going to look at it with you, but keep your comments coming. Tell us what you would say or how you would describe the personality of the site you're viewing. In the meantime, Paul's pulling up a page submitted by somebody in our audience in the past. I'm looking at it right now, and uh, let's go full screen so I can see it clearly. Defibrillators, analyzers, and AD testers. All right. What is the personality of this page? Anybody have an idea? And I asked you to think about yours, so let me tell you, let me help you with this one. Well, first of all, there's no conversation. There's information. It has the personality of a cardboard box. Now, that might be valuable once I have rapport. Marketer, did you hear what I just said? You're going to see coming up in our steps, step six is connection. I need connection with the visitor in my site because connection builds rapport. David uh, Carrier just raised his hand, uh, so to speak, and spoke uh, on here two or three times. David has an, uh, an amazing business helping, uh, helping people with elder law. As we get older, he particularly is good at using trust to protect our assets and allow us to not be damaged by catastrophic healthcare challenges. He could say it better than I. Feel free to correct me here. But David was in a quick win intensive with us recently. And, and in that process, uh, our friendship grew. I wanted to be there personally because I am all about the friendships, frankly. I don't care about a giant company. I want meaningful relationships and meaningful work. But really, before that ever happened, David and I had phone conversations in which a sort of connection occurred. Rapport was established. I hope David would agree with me, but I don't think a quick win intensive would have ever happened had we not first felt that mutual trust and that sense of, I understand a little bit about who you are and why you think that way. And he understands a little bit perhaps about who I am and why I think that way. And out of that, I admire, I, I came to admire what he's done and what he's trying to do. And from there, things have progressed. Now, we skip that entirely. What is the personality of this page? Uh, it's almost zilch. Now, there's no such thing as no personality. So zilch equals bad personality. Not bad in the sense that it's braggadocious or uh, feels like uh, somebody untrustworthy, but it is not doing anything to do what I described in my process with David. It did not build any connection or establish any rapport. Can everybody here feel that? Uh, if, if you can feel that, then let me just describe the elements contributing to that lack of connection. First of all, 
it begins with a title, not a headline. Defibrillator analyzers and AED testers. Wonderful, that is not a headline. All that is, is a title. And if I walked up to you and said, director of Mech Labs and shook your hand and stopped there, even just said direct, and that didn't say hi, didn't say the normal things that establish a common courtesy, you would, uh, you'd already start to wonder, who is this guy? Now, let's, let's go full screen uh, so that I can read. Insure proper, there's your, there's your opening word, insure. Long uh, word, uh, Saxon as a pro word probably. Uh, proper, it's, I mean, it's not, it's, but in the sense of its uh, complexity. Uh, proper operation and ultimate performance of critical life support, cardiac recitation equipment with our compliance. Do you see the first top line? Never does land. You're still building towards something because you don't have a subject. It's an understood subject. And, and, and finally it says resuscitation equipment with our compliant rugged portable precision test instruments. That is a long sentence full of modifiers and vague words that doesn't even get to the point. It makes me work, labor to understand. So now you've hit me with a title and then you've said something that I have to work on to even understand and it's complemented by a big gray space that does nothing. I have to work all the way down and guess what? I see defibrillator analyzers product features. Now, I think the chart could be very useful, and I'm not against the chart, but what it doesn't do is say there are three types of defibrillators. You can find the one that works best for you by reviewing the simple chart below. It does not talk to me. It talks at me. Now, I'm only using this not to be hard on the marketer, but to make the point that you better figure out your personality, and we're going to talk about the components of that, in just a moment. Once you get your personality right, make certain that the site matches the personality and stays consistent. Let's stop. Let's just stay there for a moment. How many of you, how many of you have met somebody and your first impression was X and then they did something completely out of character and now you didn't know who they are? You're not even sure if you can trust them. Literally weigh in right now and just shake your hand. Hi, Robert. It's good to have you join us. Um, we Robert just logged in. Uh, you missed, we revealed the whole secrets of the universe, Robert, uh, but uh, uh, it's too late. I'm sorry that you missed out on that. Um, in the meantime, uh, tell me, has anybody experienced that where somebody sent you mixed signals? What do we call it? Mixed signals. Now, I did an article for uh, an interview in the Washington Post regarding two candidates running for president. And in it, we talked about this problem of sending these mixed signals, which which cuts into your trust factor, into your credibility. So let's go back for a second. Once you establish the personality, you've got to make certain that every element of the page, all of the design uh, and, uh, and the copy supports the personality that you're trying to, trying to uh, embody. Now that's much more helpful if it's a genuine personality, if it represents your culture or yourself. Do not, marketer, do not be afraid to let, especially in the small entrepreneurial sites, be yourself. Ultimately, that's probably going to produce more than acting like you're somebody else. In big companies, uh, often it's very difficult to tell what their personality is, and brand standards do not solve this problem. And most of the time, they create more issues because they're not developed properly. So let's come back. I want to ask a question, and I'm going to try to answer it. The question is... How do we get that personality across? But before we do, I want to remind you of the danger I've just said, and that is make certain that you employ every element to produce continuity in terms of how you conduct yourself with the visitor to your side, or else you'll lose them. They won't know if they can trust you. Do not ever hit them with a negative surprise. All right, now let's go this way and talk about what's going to contribute to personality. And I'm going to ask you, the audience, to help me with this, all right? So somebody quickly tell me uh, one element of a page that you think contributes to personality. I'm watching live chat for you to fire up with your aggregate wisdom. And I know it takes, there's a slight delay. So 
while we wait, Paul is going to do a Mech Labs wrap that he's prepared for us. Um, all right, wait a second, images. All right, so I've got two images. Images. Uh, my pen isn't writing. Maybe I can get another black pen. I'll keep going, though, with a blue one. I'll try to skip black. Let's just keep going, Paul. I think we do without it. All right, images. I'm going to write the word images, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to caveat it in a moment. What is the image supposed to do? Well, the look and feel of the image should support the look and feel of the site. Uh, if you are telling me, for instance, that the book is amazing and you give me a poor one-dimensional flat image or it's still got the white canvas and the background of your page isn't white, all of those things belie what you say about the quality. So be consistent with your imagery and your copy. Make sure they agree. But I heard another thing and it said face. And let me tell you something. A face can help or hurt. It is so dangerous. I did this uh, in a series of experiments with uh, thestreet.com. And when I put Jim uh, on the screen, conversion went down. And uh, when it took him off, conversion went up. So you have, to be, you have to be careful about how you do this. But a face is particularly good when the site represents a person. Don't be afraid in a small business to even in the about us, if your family, to discuss your family business. Sometimes that honest, genuine tone is way better than pretending to be bigger than you are. And if you're a celebrity-driven business, whereas you have somebody that many people uh, say follow, uh, like uh, to some extent, I hate to say that about our business, We've tried to make Mech Labs independent, and it is, uh, but still, my name is connected. You, you've got to be careful that the business doesn't take on a different personality than the primary driver of the business success. So, there is that danger with face. Here's another. I have tested many faces, and I still find no logic that I can count on precisely as to why some outperform others. When you change the face, you will often see a huge change in conversion. We did this with uh, one of the biggest brands in the country, and we literally had a contest around the world. And we put different faces together on the site, and uh, we found that one face produced the highest conversion rate. It was not the face of a model. It was uh, uh, an average person working in the Japanese office. And the test was in the United States, and yet, conversion went up when all we changed was the face. When you do think about face, ask yourself these questions. What are the eyes communicating? Pay attention to that. Does the smile come from deep, or is it that smile that's two inches deep that matters? What direction are the eyes looking? Remember something. Human beings are wired to read so much from a face, it is shocking. So... Even if you have the right face, ask yourself this question, does it have the right message on it? All right, I'm going to move on because I can't continue. All I want you to know, because I saw the word face, Cynthia added colors. Somebody said font size and font type. I'm not going to write them on the board, but all of those contribute to personality. So when you think about the profile of who you're serving, it's a good time for you to think about the personality, uh, the nature of the person, that is your website that you're going to attempt to serve that profile with. And so as you do that, uh, you'll find variations. I'll give you a good example and, uh, and maybe it'll help you see how this can vary based on the audience you're serving. Somebody type in the button that I have most famously attacked over the years. It has one word, two syllables, and you've all heard it if you've been engaged in my teaching. It's a famous button from the early days of the internet and Joshua's the first one to nail it, in by uh, David Fogel. It is the word submit. And I have often taught, what a horrible word to use with a prospective customer. Fall on your knees before the lords of marketing and admit, surrender, we've defeated you with our superior hyperbole, our sales skills, our amazing capability to influence your mind. What a rotten thing to put on a button. However, I can tell you, that we worked with a website that had a community of 300,000 specialists and the best performing button was a little gray button that said submit. You're saying, well, wait a second, I thought you said, you know, that submit's not good. It isn't good most of the time, but the operative phrase here is most of the time. This is why we test. Here's what I found. In that site, 
the SQL Server's Worldwide Users Group. We had an audience full of programmers and database guys, the very guys that invented the submit button. And when we put submit on that site, they loved it. They responded. Conversion was solid. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that, yes, text and font and button and words uh, all matter, but be aware of the profile you're serving as you're deriving the personality uh, or discovering, a better way to say it, the personality that you're, that you're deploying with the development of your site. All right. Now that brings me to, uh, that brings me to, I'd like to talk more about that, but we're out of time and it has close conjunctions with brand, but we're out of time for that point. We've still got a little time left together. Let's go back to the diagram. So I know the profile. I've got the objective. I know the, the, the page type, the approach I'm going to take. I understand the flow and now I'm getting personality right. Uh, that's great. What comes next? Item number six. Look at your page. This is the connection phase of a relationship. Now, uh, Paul Cheney over here, I would consider a close friend. He's worked with us eight years, I think. He's worked right next to me. He's our director of marketing, but he started out in our leadership program and grew from really like an intern all the way to this role where he's at the top of the organization. What happened during that time was we didn't just see that Paul had skills. I originally had zero connection with him, but a connection developed and now he's my friend. And now I can say things to him that help him that I could never say if rapport wasn't established. Connection establishes rapport. In the same way, you're meeting prospective people for a relationship, and if you skip the connection phase, you're missing one of the most important elements of a website. So you've got to learn how to connect, and I want to just reference you to other resources. We have about 10,000 resources that we've developed and have on the internet for free. One of them is a YouTube live broadcast that is on headline writing. I've said to you before, and I know a lot of you have been on that, in that training, so I'm just going to say it and not teach it. A headline has two jobs. Its job is to, its job is to capture attention. I've got to get you to look. I've got to get you to focus even momentarily and then convert that attention. It's not enough just to capture attention. They look and they'll look away. Capture it and convert it to interest. Can I summarize that? The job of a headline is to get you into the conversation below. It does it with two micro yes. Yes, I will give you attention. Yes, I will look at what comes beneath this. Now, uh, we live in a day where it could be politically in, uh, incorrect, uh, some might think, or, or unpopular for me to do what I'm going to do next, but I am going to do it anyway, as it is my nature, and I believe in it. And that is that uh, I, I just want to reference uh, how uh, two friends meet. I'm married 32 years. Uh, when I first met my wife, it was at a function on a Sunday evening, and I didn't know who she was, and she didn't know who I was, and there would not be three children in 32 years of marriage had we not first connected. And when a man approaches someone in the U.S., and he's single, and he's trying to meet somebody, there's old language that I know is not popular today, but it makes my point, so please have mercy on me and don't beat me up on social media. But, uh, but it's often called a pickup line. Listen to me, a headline is a pickup line. There's nothing wrong with a pickup line. That's not demeaning to the other person. When I say pickup, I just mean how do you connect to that person? How do you establish the beginning of a relationship? If my wife had not first given me her attention, I say my wife today, but my my prospective wife in those days, given me attention, and it had not been converted to interest, there would have been no further engagement. But obviously, what happened in my situation was that the connection allowed me to establish an opportunity to get to know her, which is what happened when I, in an old-fashioned way, took her on a date. Now, one year, one week, and one day later, we were married. And I want to suggest to you that connection doesn't keep you married and it doesn't keep you a customer. Uh, so we often work on the things that keep a customer, but we neglect the thing that first gives us the customer. And you get no chance to work on retention until you've achieved acquisition. So every single one of you with a web page need to ask a simple question. Do I have a strong connector feature on my page? And it is not just a headline and a subheadline. 
It engages people with a voice that talks to them, and I want to tell you what to do and what not to do, so watch closely. I can put two words on the board and explain my point. Most websites are proclamation. In fact, proclamation is like advertising. I'm going to say proclamation. I'm going to say declaration. You know, we're the best. We're the prettiest. We're the fastest. We're the amazingestest. And you need us. Proclamation. Declaration. And they're short on what they need to be, which is explanation. Talk to me. Half the time when I get a marketer and I say, what does this mean? And they start talking. The exact words coming out of their mouth are the best copy I could put on the page. But they don't realize that because now they're just talking to a friend explaining. Listen, when you meet somebody and you're asking them to exchange value with you, you need to explain, not declare. You need to explain, not proclaim. You need to talk with them, not at them. So with that in mind, I just want to make sure you got the point. So in my, with the amazing graphics that I've invested in for this program, I'm going to show you what I'm trying to say. No, that didn't even work. My amazing graphics didn't go so far as to getting a pen that has good ink. All right, good enough, Paul says. No, no, yes. So do, is that clear, class? Do we get it, all right? Because I went, Dave says, I want to see your title. Uh, Dave, uh, whatever title I had, I probably just lost it. I went through at least seven minutes of, of dubious political incorrectness, and then I, uh, I, I struggled to actually make my point with a pen. Uh, look, guys, your page needs explanation, and that helps you with connection. So use a headline. Use a subheadline. Let's go back to the diagram. And then invest in explanation so that people feel like you're talking with them and that interaction gives them a sense of growing trust. Prior to trust, you need rapport. Prior to rapport, you need connection. The connector gives you a chance to establish rapport and rapport gives you a chance to take it to the trust level. All right, good. Let's pull up the page we were looking at for just a moment. In fact, let's pull up another page. Paul, can you drag us one over? And I hope some of you put in, you know, the personality of your own page, uh, but I want you to look at this page. Now, is that a product page? It looks like it is. Yeah. Let's, let's click on the home page. Someone submitted this, but let's click on the home page. By the way, the product page should have personality too. Okay, give your pets the fresh flowing water they crave. All right. Um, this is a good example because there's a lot of uh, intensity around pets. And I, I have a dog that's my close friend and travels with me everywhere. It's a Belgian Malinois. You can check him out on Instagram. I'm getting ready to post things from the weekend. And so I, I can relate to this. Let's go full screen, Cliff, on the page. However, we've got an entire block of, let's call it, uh, of content in front of me, of interaction space, of mental canvas, and it says one thing. And the rest, rest of the pictures showing me uh, multiple versions of a dog. Scroll down if you would, please. That's way too much space without anything actually communicating. Now, I see a little piece under here, but once again, here's, a, here's an obstacle to relationship. Have you ever been with somebody that doesn't talk much and you're trying to talk to them? And it's like you just can't, you, you can't get enough feedback or enough information to establish genuine connection. Don't make me scroll that far down to find out anything of meaning because you have not shown me enough at the top at all to get me to buy anything. You haven't even shown enough to get me to want to learn more. Scroll back up. Give your pets the fresh flowing water they crave. I get the idea. And there's two pets drinking from a bowl. Um, but let me ask you a question. Why would I click somewhere else to learn about this? Are you selling more than one thing on this page? And if so, 70%, 30% rule is broken. Because this looks like the main thing. And if it's the main thing, I shouldn't be required to click again. You should, I, I'm on the page. What do you mean click there? That's like, 
That's like meeting my friend uh, for, for dinner at a restaurant and then shaking his hand and saying, let's drive to the restaurant now. But I'm already at a restaurant. Why do I need to go to another one? Or you're back to the original problem, and that is why are you wasting so much space to sell something that's not the main thrust of the page? Either way, you're in a trap. Uh, so scroll down. All right, so now I see uh, a couple of other things, and I think I'm starting to see, and by the way, I'm working to figure this out, that this site sells more than one thing. But how many of you, scroll back up, how many of you get the impression when you come to this site that it's about this unique product that they sell? Do you follow the logic of that? With that headline, you're talking about the wrong thing. So what you've really done, and let me tell you where this exists, because, uh, because 50 years ago, this country was experiencing the amazing impact of mass media combined with advertising. The last 100 years built an industry that didn't hardly exist. And, and uh, beginning with radio, start really with newspapers, and then radio, which was even more powerful, and then television prior to the internet, I mean, the internet's just version four. I mean, you can go back to the catacombs and see what, how they did it in Rome, but right now, just think now, version four in, 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 the, in the last hundred years of an explosion. The newspapers goes back earlier, but you follow the logic. An explosion in the ability to reach many people with the same message. And so advertising stuck itself on top of the internet. And until AdWords came along, and, uh, which really was a game changer, Banner ads were the primary option, which is just somebody's ad from a magazine cut out and slapped onto the digital page, and it produced very little, and it interrupted a lot of people. We should not be serving ads. We should be serving people with our ads, but that's a different conversation. Point I want to make for you is, that's really an ad. And it's a, it, it harkens back to an old day when you blasted them with an ad in the face, but it looks like the introduction to the business because it's what you see on the home page and it interferes and doesn't flow and violates what we're learning. So what I want to do with you now is uh, shift back to the diagram. And somebody give me a time check. I know you've been holding up signs. They hold up signs for me, but I still don't know how much time I have. Yeah, All right, I'm going to wrap this up for this, this piece. I also mentioned the three questions. And for the purpose of those who have not been with us before, I want to point out in that space, with that pet safe, we failed to answer the three questions that we needed to answer. The first one is, am I in the right place? Where am I? Now, when you come to the top of that page, let's go there. Let, let me just give you these three. I know, uh, I so, I'm sorry, Dave, and, and a few of you have heard this before, but I've got to help the whole audience. So bear with me, and maybe I'll get you teaching this next time. Take a look at that page. I don't even know if I'm in the right place. I came because I was looking for something for my pet and I see this site designed apparently to sell water bowls and I don't know that that's what I'm looking at. And so uh, what do I do to sort out my confusion? I hit the back button. That's the number one solution in the digital universe. And then David's got the next question. You can see it in the chat. What can I do here? Is it clear what you can do here? Sure, you can learn more about water bowls. Do you see the problem? You have seven seconds, four inches, to answer three questions. And here's what I know now. I know that I'm in some place that sells water bowls and I can learn more about it. Complete failure at all points. And I mean this uh, graciously, but, the, but I'm being gracious, I hope, but your customer, prospective customer, is not. Because they're pissed. Because they put up with this nonsense everywhere. Because we're tired of it. So, hold on. And then the third question, it's in David's notes, but why should I do whatever that thing is I should do here? Like, in this case, why should I shop here? Can anybody give me a reason why we should shop here? Now, I, I want to point out to you that I didn't, never even saw this page before the broadcast started. I'm not, uh, I didn't select it to find something easy to use as a target. I'm just, it's the first one. I didn't know what Paul was going to pull over here, but it just illustrates a point I've seen over and over again. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what I can do here, and I don't know why I should do it. That's all about establishing something we call story click in screenwriting, and it means, okay, I get the gist of this thing. I need to get the gist of a human being to begin to trust them. So connection allows me to, to, to build rapport, and then I got to sort of get what you're all about. If I don't have that, it doesn't go further. So, so what we're failing to do here is the most important thing, and that's the danger. And what I would say to everyone that's on the call, 
That leads up, let's go back to the diagram. That leads to where we really need to drill down next week. I really like point nine. If you're trying to write your copy, understand that the what comes before the why, and I wanna to talk to you about how to craft the what in such a way as to get ultimate clarity and then support the what with the why. Join us in a week when I'll continue teaching through this content. And right now, just give us some feedback so we can read it, adjust from it, and do a better job next week. We're grateful uh, to have you here. We're especially grateful for your trust. And I would ask you to subscribe if you haven't already and to share this with a friend uh, if you can. Uh, that would be awesome. And give us some feedback right now. And also, join me. I, I have a massive audience of 163 followers on Instagram. It's something we've been testing for six months. My little daughter makes fun of me. I think every friend she has has more connections than me. So feel sorry for me and join me on Instagram. And also there's a lot of stuff we do on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thanks everyone. And we'll talk to you in about a week.